One day, uh, after I had finished law school, I was in the Empire State Building, fielding a call from one of my mentors. He said, I have to leave for Russia. I have this office in Cheapside Bay. Why don't you start your own practice? And I need to know in about an hour whether or not you want to do this. I'm 24 years old. I have approximately $200 to my name, approximately. I began to sweat profusely, but I knew what I didn't want to do, and that's work for someone. So I went downstairs and I said, let's do it. And the day I passed the bar exam in New York and New Jersey, I quit my job and started my own practice. Brooklyn teaches you hustle. People always say Manhattan, Manhattan, Manhattan. Manhattan's got nothing on Brooklyn in terms of hustle. You're talking about fierce competition. You're opening up your little burger shop next to a line of McDonald's. There was 25 lawyer offices within three to four block radius. You have more lawyers here. It's called the Esquire Lounge, actually. These places are general practice, and they just dealt in volume. I looked around and said, there has to be a way to survive in this environment. There have to be clients here that want to be treated a little bit differently or would pay, let's say, a small premium um, to have their phone calls returned within 24 hours, which is something from the outset that we guaranteed to do. That When I say we, it was just me at the time. No one really believed that. Comedy has a ring of truth to it. Clients always complained about the fact that lawyers never got back to them, or the only time lawyers would get back to them is when they um, needed to get paid. And I realized that that was something that I could sort of expose. And when I say expose, I mean improve on. It was just a part of me, really, that at the end of the day, that just wanted to change things. Like, literally just wanted to change and, and think, well, why do lawyers have to be this way? Why, you know, why does it have to actually uh, be this way? Human contact is huge. When I meet my clients, I sit back for 15 good minutes and I let them just go because it's their story and it's who they are. If you force that relationship, if you say, I get it, it becomes automated. My mom was a designer and, and she would sketch handbags. This idea was drawn and then it came to life. These details, and the zeal and the love and the sort of craftsmanship that they have when they put these things together. That's really tough to do in law, but you do and I do whatever it is that I need to do to feel as if that's happening. That's really what made us. I think listening is an integral part of that. Your story gets out, now I know how it can help. I always want to be an entrepreneur. I always want to start my own thing. Uh, I always wanted to sort of um, state exactly how I was gonna do it on my own terms. I wanted something else too. Uh, King and McDougal were going to a restaurant called Komodo. And Komodo was started by uh, uh, my client, Felipe Donnelly, this amazing young chef who was in advertising prior and decided to sort of follow his dream and uh, drop everything. Uh, and I constantly pay whatever he pays me back to the restaurant because I go there so often. So at the end of the day, he's actually uh, making much more than, than I am on this attorney-client transaction. His story is a story about passion and how you push through everything that you need to push through to get it done. I really like being around entrepreneurs. I love that spirit. I love the can-do attitude. I love the sort of, I'm going to do this. And you know what, if I fail, I fail. But I will not have said that I didn't try this and I just did something safe. We see that sort of fire in someone's eyes. It's almost an intoxicating thing. I want to be part of that. And I understand that drive, that focus, that terror at the same time. The main priority in our restaurant is, is service. Uh, food has to be great, and I think that for, for Daniel it's the same thing, is that the legal work has to be phenomenal. But the service is what 
keeps you there and what keeps you coming back. You know, if you are in a bind and you can't go to the office and drop off papers, he makes sure that somebody comes over and picks up whatever you need. I mean, he's been here since the first week. I, I do know that for him to be able to be a part of his client's life and just help them push through, it's kind of that reason that he's, he's, he's a lawyer, which is what makes him so special. It's terrifying enough finding one lawyer, try finding four. So what we're doing with this sort of 360 model is we're saying, look, you're a small business, you want to start up, and you need a lawyer to help you out with this, 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 and this. We're there for you for that. Daniel made a great first impression on me, partly because we just sat down and had a great conversation. I'm a documentary filmmaker, and when you film people for a living, it's important to have somebody that, that gives back. You know, you're not talking to a brick wall. Because when you're coming to somebody with your small business, you are not just coming to them with this piece of work that you need handled. You are coming to them with your entire, you're coming to them with your life, with everything that matters to you. It comes down to sincerity. I can't have a situation where someone comes into my office or there's six people in my waiting room and I'm shaking hands with them with a glazed over a look in my eye. We want to grow, but not at the price of giving up the personal stories. Brooklyn shaped me. That's in your blood. You don't escape that. You can sort of live in Manhattan, but you still wink at Brooklyn. Looking back, it was absolutely insane. It was absolutely insane. There's a thousand reasons not to do it. There's a thousand reasons not to do it. I don't care. I don't care. Wouldn't trade it for the world.